Last year we had uh, really half a winter CSA. We had six pickups. I think we started in February last year. This year we we went with the uh, full season CSA, and we realized that to do a full CSA, what we also need to do is uh, storage crops. Um, if you really want to eat local in New England, you need to have uh, some storage and root crops uh, that will uh, you can put away in the fall and last all winter. You're not ever going to be able to grow everything in the middle of winter, um, although we can grow some greens. So uh, we needed a facility to uh, put those storage crops in, and that's why we're standing uh, on the porch of a, of a new building. So our CSA this year started uh, in December. We had a, a pickup pre-holiday, uh, and then we skipped ahead to uh, mid-January. So we have two pickups in uh, January, February, March, April, and one pickup in May. So a total of 10 pickups. Uh, we do have a Warner uh, option if people would like to pick up in Warner. The winter storage, um, that's, that's uh, calorie crops, uh, root vegetables, enough to pretty much feed you if you could find some some meat someplace else if you sure. haven't been a eater. Uh, we'll have potatoes, onions, um, and we hope to do a better job next year. Cabbage, they won't last all winter, but they'll last into uh, January anyway, maybe February. Um, you know, winter squash, same thing, it won't last all winter. But also we want to do, uh, next year we plan to do more of other crops that will last. Uh, garlic, it's tough to find uh, garlic anywhere that's produced in the United States right now. Um, and so we plan to have garlic, uh, celeriac, uh, leeks, um, all those things will be uh, nice additions to a winter menu and we'll have all that. In addition to carrots and beets and uh, turnips and all that stuff. These are Chiaga. Chiaga beets. If you cut them, they are red and white, beautiful on the inside like a diamond in the rock. Very special variety of beef, and we are weighing out the packages for the uh, CSA market, the Community Supported Agriculture. Look at the size of this beet. They don't always come that big. It's very unusual, but it's and, a beautiful beet. And again, what kind of beet is that? Chiogia. C-H-I-O. How do you yeah. sound like? G-G-I-A, I think. There you go. And of course, we'll have... Uh, also some storage uh, crops this week. We're going to do some fingerling potatoes, onions, uh, the beets you saw, uh, some parsnips and rutabaga. Um, so we needed a place to store all that uh, when we harvest them. And uh, this building was just, uh, well, it's really not completed, but we got into it, uh, uh, snuck into it about seven days or ten days ago and uh, trying to make use of it. And we're, as I say, we're standing on the porch, so we put plastic uh, on the front of the porch. This will be gone in the summertime, and it's a nice uh, southern exposure for starting uh, seedlings that have sprouted. So you see uh, various uh, types of seedlings and around me here. These are, we hope to be microgreens at some point for later in the, in the winter uh, for the CSA. So these get to be, uh, oh, inch and a half or so high, and uh, they get cut off and placed in, uh, in pints. These are arugula. So this building is uh, meant as a storage facility. We have a large walk-in uh, cooler that we built, 12 by 14. Uh, the overall building, uh, the pad here is 30 by 40 feet. Our old system was to carry individual trays from the greenhouses into the house. So this is like cutting uh, 50 minutes out of an hour. Our concept here a little bit in terms of we're, we're still working, uh, we have to talk to the town a bit about the possibility of a farm stand here. Um, but I think, I think that should work out. Um, so I'm thinking of it really as uh, sort of a, f a factory outlet for organic produce. We, um, we are harvesting now seven days a week uh, and our produce is going somewhere six days a week. So there's really a constant flow of, of fresh produce coming in and out of here. So we're not expecting to have any fancy farm stand. We, uh, we may have had, you know, uh, 50, 60, 70 pounds of green beans come in that morning. Um, they may be destined for a cooperative market or uh, other uh, source the next day. If people stop in, they want to buy a few pounds of green beans, they can do that. 
The other thing that we'll have is uh, you can't see today out in front of us is a new acre or so of uh, fields that we have uh, right off the parking area here where we plan to grow lots of our lettuce and chard and kale and those things. So if people want uh, lettuce, if it's not harvested and ready to go, they can just walk out the door and point to the lettuce they want and we'll take care of it for them. A person, if they were dedicated, might be able to buy from you 75% of the food they need uh, in the winter. Uh, um, I mean, you're talking those basic things, squash, potatoes, yep. uh, uh, hopefully cabbages, the root vegetables, so turnips, certainly. you're going to be doing turnips? So. Uh, yep, certainly 75% of the produce. So think, let yeah. me put it another way, what if, uh, you know, market basket, uh, if, uh, if, if we run out of oil, market basket closes its doors, uh, People are going to be lining up uh, in front of. Uh... Yeah, I think they will. I think it's sort of happening already in a way. We, the, really, the idea for doing a farm stand here was, you know, as as we were building this building, um, lots of people stopped by, curious as to what we were doing, and virtually everyone was delighted to see that we're making use of the land, and virtually everyone asked whether we were going to have a farm stand. So, um, you know, we might as well. Uh, take note of that and see what we can do. We, I, I think I said last uh, time we talked, we sell every bit of what we grow and uh, we're, we've, we'll expand by about 40% in our land that we've cultivated this coming year and uh, I don't expect any difficulty getting rid of the produce. So, so uh, you know, we're, we're pretty optimistic. Well, um, you'll see us here if, uh yeah, our garden runs low. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, we're also, you know, we have a couple other things, you know, in mind. You know, Stacy's uh, my farm manager, is um, not adverse to uh, taking care of a few chickens, you know. So we may end up with a few eggs here and there, and uh, we, who knows, we may have some other things that come down the line. But uh, we'll try.